Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word of God that serves as the basis for our meditation this evening comes from Luke chapter 12, the parable of the rich man. In the name of Jesus, who is and remains the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, my dear Christian friends. Imagine yourself doing a bit of house cleaning. There are things that need dusting, things that need, need moving, so you get a rag and some spray, and you get to work. And you begin to move things that have stood in their place for a number of years, only to find things that are hidden behind them. Oh, that's where that old pair of shoes went. And then you begin to think to yourself, I might have gone the rest of my life never having found those shoes. Those used to be some of my very favorites. I wore them everywhere. But that was four or five pairs of shoes ago, and I've since moved on. Now, here remain these old, worn shoes, caked in dust, ready for the trash bin. You know, eventually, we find this to be true of all of the things that we possessed. Inevitably, they break or rust, or they get stolen or lost. These are all the things that we possess in this life, and it seems that we can't take them with us. This serves as a reminder that everything else in this world is the same as how we're going to wind up, just as everything else, eventually covered in dust, and buried deep down. We spend so much of our lives chasing things, treasure hunting, looking for the next thing that will distract us from the inevitabilities of rust and dust and theft and decay. And really, all of these things, the dusty shoes, the ancient furniture, the gray hair that you find looking in the mirror, and the fading memories of happy days gone by, all of these things are symptoms of a greater problem that we don't like to spend much time thinking about. And if you take a look at modern Western culture, we, we do everything we can to put death out of our minds, instead to distract ourselves with other things that keep us, for a moment or two, perhaps happy. We try to relegate death, on the other hand, to the farthest recesses of our minds until we just can't avoid it any longer and we're faced with it. But Ash Wednesday is a day that reminds us that we are dust and to dust we will return. But this isn't something that we need be afraid of. We need to be reminded of this uncomfortable truth and that's part of the reason why we put ashes on our heads just as believers in the Old and New Testament have done for years. We also are reminded of this important truth in the Gospel reading this evening. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 12, a question rises up for Jesus from one of the people in the crowd who are listening to him teach. And he says, tell my brother to share his inheritance with me. And we don't know exactly what all the circumstances of the situation were. We don't know uh, who was being fair to whom. But we can tell from Jesus' response that this question came from a place of greed, materialism. And so Jesus responds, life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And really Jesus' words here beg the question which we're going to think about this evening. What is your life? Of what does your life consist? How do you spend the hours, the days of your life while you're here on earth? Is your whole week spent waiting for Friday because you just can't wait to get away from the work and the responsibilities of the rest of the week? Or perhaps do you hate spending time in nursing homes because they're just so 
dreary and depressing. Do you hate spending time in hospitals, having to make hospital visits because it's just a reminder, yet another reminder of your own mortality? You see the people dying there, that'll one day happen to you. Do you spend more time, more money than you care to admit, chasing after comfort, hoping that perhaps this time these things will last and our attention won't be drawn yet again away to something else? Do you look around at your home as you wipe away the dust and wonder, is, is this really all there is to my life? Is this all I have to say about what I've left in my wake? If so, if you are the one who is lonely, if you are the one who is searching for meaning, for significance in these things, know that Jesus knows your heart. He knows exactly what you are yearning for. And because he loves us, he tells you and me, don't waste your life worrying about stuff, about wealth. God knows what you need. He gives you your daily bread, all that you need for your body and life. We pray for it regularly, and when we pray for it, is not the answer always yes? Because he loves you, your body, and your soul? He blesses you even with gifts purely for your own enjoyment. All good things come from God. Even all of your happy memories are gifts from God. But if in response to these things, you put God out of your mind, and these earthly treasures become your God, then what have you to lose but the treasures that have been won for you that are accumulated in heaven? Jesus illustrates this point with a brief parable. A wealthy man's land produced extremely abundant crops. And you know what? We're not told that there was any bad reason for him getting the crops. You know, it's not that we're told that he had used dishonest dealing to acquire or amass his wealth. There was nothing wrong with him having these things. But in the rich man's mind, the most important thing was not his soul and it was not his relationship with God. Instead, the most important thing in his life and his whole life was characterized by harnessing material wealth so that he could ultimately enjoy life here and now with no thought of death or what happens afterwards. The possibility that his life might not last didn't even cross his mind. His plan for the future was, well, take life easy, work so that you can finally rest, have a nice long retirement, eat, drink, and be merry. He was completely selfish from what Jesus tells us and devoted to indulging the appetites and desires of his sinful nature. And he didn't even say thank you to God for any of his things. Death or God who saves from death couldn't be further from his mind. Unfortunately for this rich man, the one possibility he refused to consider is exactly what happened. You've heard it said, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. All that wealth could do him no good as he stood before his creator. While he was considering what was most important in life, he wound up neglecting the real important thing, that which is most important, having a good relationship with God. And in the end, he found himself in death, not with riches, but with less than nothing. He was exactly what God called him, a fool. And there are no scarier words in Scripture than when God uses those words to describe one of his beloved creatures. Someone who might have been his child. Such greed. We don't always like to talk about that. And it, because it might seem harmless at first. And it feels comfortable. But it is dangerous. Because it gets us to cling on things that are ultimately going to fade away from us all at the same time while robbing us of the most important aspect of life, having that relationship with God. Because he is the only one who can actually save us from death. 
That, dear friends, is where Jesus comes in. Remember, today, you are dust. To dust you shall return. None of us knows how much time that we have before we have to stand before our Lord. Given that reality, we shouldn't approach life. We dare not approach life the way this rich man did. We dare not succumb to the temptation to focus our attention on this life as if this is all there is. Because deep down, we all desire something more than this. God has planted that desire in us to have this good relationship with God, to have life that lasts forever, life that is to the full, life that is full of meaning and value. Far more important than this life's prizes are our eternal soul and that relationship with God. And so Jesus enters the picture. Jesus, the Son of God, meaning that he is wealthier than anyone else in this whole world. Even in heaven. And he made himself poor for our sake. He let go of the glories of heaven. He came down into our darkness to confront that which we turn our eyes away from. The source of our problems, sin and death. He looked death in the eye. He drank the cup of suffering. And he came out victorious. Death is conquered? Then what have we to fear? We don't have to be afraid even to talk about it. Because now the sting has been taken from death. Death no longer leads to hell for those who trust in Jesus. Death is just sleep. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. So it's not even that we die. We simply change places. For to live is Christ. But to die is gain. Do you see what we've gained? The joy of a perfect relationship with the one who has saved us from death. So, dear Christian, this evening, I ask you again, what is your life? Since you were buried with Christ in your baptism, your life consists of who you are in Christ. In Christ is life and meaning and belonging and value. In Christ, you have that good relationship that you so desperately need with your creator. To God be the glory. God who provides for your body, for your soul. Real peace belongs to you now and in eternity. Heaven is your inheritance. As if you were Christ himself, dear Christian, your life is full, your cup is overflowing. Goodness and love are going to follow you every step of the way from here to hereafter. So therefore, now is the time to repent of our sins. Because these things enslave us. Why would we want to cling to that which holds us down? Jesus says instead to give these things over to him, to to carry our burdens for us so that we may live even in this life free. Free from sin. Free from the fear of death. And so we say, and we say with confidence, we are dust. To dust we shall return. And yet, in Christ we have been made rich to God. We can be rich to God in this life. And we can be rich to each other because Christ has made you rich. You lack nothing. The battle's been won. It is finished. Therefore, your life It's not about the stuff. It's about the one who has saved you from death. If Jesus Christ is risen from the dead, then that means that death is not even the end. No, dear Christian, the best is yet to come. Amen. The peace of God that transcends all human understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Please stand as we join to confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed, printed on page 12. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. 